Hey y'all, welcome back to Andy's Little Homestead. The other day I was working on a sawmill and the blade went from 550 RPMs to zero RPMs way too quickly. And in the process, it rapidly and spontaneously disassembled my drive shaft. And I don't even have anybody to blame for it. See, this cherry log has been sitting for a, a good five years or so. It's nice and hard. And I went full speed into the crotch of it and it just, it was too much. I actually had to take the chainsaw and make a relief cut and then a split them all to pull the rest of the slab off of there just to see what had happened. But the blade looks like it might be okay. So I reckon we'll get started. Now it's a good idea when you're disassembling any kind of drive line, drive shafts, anything like that. Good practice is to make a mark from one spot to another. That way when you put it back on, it's oriented exactly the same so everything stays balanced. Um, we're not going to do that because A, I don't know if it was balanced in the first place. B, when I put it back together, I had no way of checking that. And third, it's only spinning at 550 RPM, so it's only going to shake itself loose so bad. So these are all of our drive line components. We've got our tail shaft that goes into the transmission side and then has a yoke on it, goes to a U-joint and goes to the drive shaft itself. We have the drive shaft, which is painted like a Detroit diesel tasting candy cane the best flavor of candy cane. And then here at the end, it goes to this little little coupler that's actually got two U-joints. I, I don't know what it's for. It's got a spring inside there like it's supposed to dampen vibration or something. So so we're gonna call that a wobble doofer. I'm not sure what it's actually called, but we're gonna, we're gonna replace the U-joints on all of them. So there are a couple different ways to take U-joints apart. The first one you've already seen me do before. You got your uh, cap right here. The rest of it's, uh, well, the rest of it's gone. So one of the ways to do this is just with a socket. You get a socket that's uh, smaller than the size of the cap so that you can just drive the cap in. Keep in mind there are several different locking mechanisms, but right now the rest of the U-joint's gone. So we should be able to just drive this through. And there we go. Now there's several different styles of U-joints. These here on the tail shaft are just pressing basically. They're held in place it appears with friction and you know, some load bearing paint. These however are a little different. They have an internal clip. Basically it's just a C-clip that keeps that U-joint cap from popping out outward. Some of them actually are recessed on the on the yoke itself and there's an external clip. You just look at it, figure out what, what's happening and then remove it. So for these to get these clips out, we're gonna use a pair of snap ring pliers. I was wrong. I lied to you. The uh, clip itself doesn't go all the way around. It's not very close. So the uh, snap ring pliers don't open wide enough. So hammer and a screwdriver. Or maybe we won't remove the clips first. Maybe we'll beat on it a little bit so that the clip isn't so tight up against the, the little hole in the yoke. And then we'll remove it. Y'all give me a break. I, I don't do this for a living. As you can see, a little bit of violence in there made that clip much more accessible. Now y'all, when this happened, uh, it was loud, it was violent. I had to change my underwear. And uh, you can see why looking at this, cause this U-joint was the first one that broke and then it ended up uh, pulling the caps off the one at the tail shaft. But how much force does it take to shear off three quarters of an inch of steel. Even if it is cast, that's still uh, still quite a bit. Anyway, we'll get the rest of them apart. I want to know who the hell put all this paint on here that's holding these caps in place. That was, that was decidedly inconvenient. Well, I finally broke it loose. Which is good because we almost had to move into my next lesson, which was uh, it can't be tight if it's liquid. Fortunately, we ain't got to do that. If you want to avoid all this mess, you can use a shop press. I don't have a shop press. Barely even have a shop. That's okay. We only got one more to do. And there we go. Now, when you're making any kind of a repair to anything, it's important to know not just what broke, but why it broke. So y'all take a look at this U-joint. Know what's not on here? Zerk fitting. These are not serviceable without pulling them apart. There is not a drop of grease on there. There's not a drop of grease on these needle bearings. That's a problem. And it probably wasn't helping us out with the other one. Obviously the real problem was the fact that, you know, it grabbed the log and 
exploded itself but but there very well could have been a previous crack in the u-joint or, or something else just as, as a result of wear again i don't think the lack of grease alone is what did it i think the jacked up log crotch is what did it but um still i'm kind of glad that we're doing all this so now we're going to put all of our new u-joints in please now we're going to put all of our new u-joints in place as you can see these have a zerk fitting now some of the zerk fittings like this one are just kind of square off the edge and some of them go at an angle and one of the best tips that i got uh actually from the comments was when you put these on if this is at an angle angle it towards wherever the drive shaft is that way you can get the grease gun in there i didn't know that so i learned something new the reality is that every time i post a video there's at least a few dozen people who do whatever that thing is every single day so i will never complain about people telling me a better way to do something anyway so we've got to pull the caps We've got to put the u-joint in place and we've got to drive the caps in and we've got to do it without losing all those little needle bearings in you know like i did last time i dropped the super precision important rolly thingy in the sand did y'all see where i put my other beaten socket And there we go. One nice new wobble doofer. I would like to know what the real name for this thing is. Well, let's put the rest of it together. There we go. Well back together. Everything's moving pretty good. Now we gotta put the shaft back on, get the log pried off of the uh, teeth that it's kind of buried in, and we'll try it out. Y'all, I could be wrong, but I think our blade is okay. I want to make sure that I inspect it real closely because uh, that's a lot of force. The outside of this blade is spinning at 88 miles an hour. That way. I did the math. And when it grabbed on four or five gullets, it stopped it immediately. As you can see, this one's already been broken off before and they welded it back in place, but still in good shape. I think we're safe to fire it up. It doesn't really matter what happens. Any day I get to hear this old Detroit sing is a good day. Whoever can guess what song I've got playing in here, I'll send you my hat. You'll never get it. We've got a bigger problem now. That's gone. She's broke. Sheared right off. Well, Andy, if you just put a slip clutch on it, shut up. Just shut up. I'm gonna figure this one out. We even managed to break the tail shaft off of here. Son of a biscuit. <sighs> it's not a good day, y'all. I'm gonna take some measurements on some things and see what we can come up with. Okay, so it's been a little bit, but we got all of our parts that we needed. And I started out with mystery parts. I have no idea what this drive shaft came off of or how it got put together. So what I did was I took a million measurements of everything. Then I went and checked out Summit Racing because they seem to be really good about keeping all the dimensions of different parts on there and found out that the flange yoke and the double carbon joint which is this little guy right here are the exact same as the front drive shaft on a square body the other side of it was of course not the same but it was a standard gm 27 spline so i got that all new spicer u joint we'll put it back together so our uh, flip yoke here is stuck on here pretty good so what i did was i took this bearing puller and we're just gonna cinch it down real tight on there so that it kind of 
grabs the sides of it. Then we'll be able to pop it right off, at least in theory. Now this actually took way longer to get everything that I needed than I had planned on, unfortunately. I figured I had enough lumber, I didn't bother with going to the junkyard to pick up the parts that I need. So I just went ahead and ordered them. Some that didn't have them, I got the flan joke off of Amazon and, well, would you believe it? They made a shipping label and then didn't send it. So this process is taking longer than it should have. But we're here now. I had plenty of lumber to keep working on the house. So hopefully we'll be good to go after this. Well, I just pulled my bearing puller off of there. So I may have to cut a groove in it or something. And there we go. I'm not crazy about everything from Harbor Freight, but they got a decent bearing puller set. If you're gonna buy Chinese tools, you might as well pay Chinese prices. And that right there is the exact reason that I'm not sponsored by anybody. Before we put it together, we wanna to make sure our slip yoke fits. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Y'all have seen me do this once before, so. There we go. Got a new flange yoke, got a new slip yoke at that end. Gotta put it back together. Okay, so we got a small problem here. The uh, tail shafts right here is just a hair longer than the one that we pulled off of there and it's causing some fitment issues up here. So what we're gonna do is very carefully and precisely bump the power unit back like an inch. Yeah, this will probably work. Well, it fits now, but we only pulled to one side, so we gotta, gotta bump it the other way. I think we're good now. Now we just gotta try and get this blade free, which is gonna require its own brand of finesse. I just tried to wedge my axe in there and uh, that happened. <sighs> good times, good times. Uh, uh. There we go. Yeah, you can see that stuff just packed them gullets full. I mean, that was, that was pretty bad, but Everything appears to be intact. Can't remember if I mentioned this earlier, but the, the biggest problem here is that I've got to maintain a certain speed when I push that log through. If I go too slow, it'll start to walk the blade off. Everything's dialed in to go this exact speed. But now that I've got a five-year-old log that's just harder than a diamond in an ice storm, it's just, I don't know, man. I think I'm done with this log. I think I'm just gonna cut another cherry tree, a new one, a fresh one. I'm gonna cut that one for Mike, cause, uh, this one ain't happening. We are, however, gonna fire it up and test it out one time because I need to make sure that the blade's still spinning straight. I really don't wanna have to get this hammered out again. Not bad for a cold start after a month. Okay, so that was a royal pain in the but here we are, she's running again. Everything's looking good. Got a whole bunch of brand new parts on it, nice and greasy. Everything's good to go. I'm gonna go back through, check all my blade adjustments, make sure that my lead is just right so that I got the, the blade turned just a little bit into the log the way that it's supposed to be. But, but y'all, I think 
we're back in good shape. I am never touching this log again. It's just not happening. Not every log is a winner. Not every project is a winner, but that's okay, y'all. We still got it done. Thankfully, I had enough lumber behind me to keep making progress on the house. Well, now that I'm almost out of it, mill's back up, so all's well that ends well. If anybody out there builds drive shafts, what I really need for this is a slip clutch. I, I need a slip clutch somewhere down this line so that when the blade does grab, the shaft can just keep spinning without, you know, tearing something apart. So if anybody out there builds drive shafts and that's the kind of thing that you can make happen for me, uh, I would very much appreciate it. I, I had looked into the options of using like a tractor, like PTO drive shaft and, and just the, the splines make it all fit together. It just didn't really work. But even if it wasn't the most successful project in the world, I gotta try and take the small victories as they come. And I learned a lot of through this whole process. I had no idea what a double carton was a month ago. So now that's a thing I know. I know all the parts that are on here now. And when I inevitably break them again, I can go to the junkyard and pull the front drive shaft off of a, you know, 84 square body and I'll be good to go. So in the end, it's a win. Maybe not completely, but I'm taking it anyway. So anyway, that's it. I'm glad to have it back up and running. As always, I hope y'all enjoyed and hope you learned something. I love you. God bless.